Ahem. <laughs> ah, I'll start that again. Um, hello, everybody. This is my bird and learn. I'm staggeringly tired. Absolutely staggeringly tired. Have you got some? You got some hearing now? Uh, here we go. Can we all hear me now? Has everyone been like? Everyone's been like, he's very low. I gotta up the volume as much as I possibly can. Let me pull this down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, the sound's on now, eh? Um, all right, still, boy, it's still pretty peaky, isn't it? How's that? Hola, very loud and clear. Okay, how's that? A little bit, a little bit better for us. Um, I'm a professional podcaster, folks. That's me. Uh, so Burn to Learn. This is my bird alert. I was amusing myself with the thought that I, what I was describing before with these amazing little things, these little Zs or Zs, as the case may be, um, that you could use to, to organize cables. Well, guess what? I, I was organizing, I was organizing the cable that was attached to my microphone, and of course I hadn't plugged it in. So um, there you go. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, good evening, whatever that is. We can hear you now. Very good. Hello, Jack. Uh, hello, Samich. Hello, Gopher Fluffernut. Hello, Danish Ducklings. JD Slicer. Oh, we got lots of And Cal, of course. Lovely Cal. Hello, Cal. And James R. Gurney. How are you? James R. Gurney. Um, so what do we got? Uh, good evening to Grumpy Gray Dad. That sounds like what I should be calling myself. Well, good, uh, good evening to you and first time chat to you. Who else we got? First time chat to Asset Junkie. Meredith, you're muted. Damn right I was. And probably a good thing, too. Uh, I think he noticed. Thank you, Chewy Do. Uh, hey there, strange carrot man. I am. It's the it's the carrot. It's the it's the carrot cake with the cream cheese icing that I love. Poor Jane. It's her birthday today. Uh, like I said, she's twenty one again. And uh, what is she doing all day? She's planning the birthday party that's happening tomorrow. It's not for her. It's for my it's for my my stepmom's eightieth birthday party. So she's actually on her birthday doing all of the legwork required to get uh, these poor, my poor wife is spending her entire time organizing a birthday for my, for my stepmom. Uh, and what to, to add uh, absolute, you know, insult to injury tomorrow, I am, I'm going to be at this, at this uh, sci-fi and biology talk up at the University of Toronto in Scarborough, which you are all welcome to join, by the way, if you'd like to come and, and check it out by all means. I wonder if there's a way for me to, I wonder if I could stream from there. I doubt it. I can't stream from my own garage. How am I going to be able to stream from a garage, from a, from a, from a, a, a strange university setup? Um, so yeah, these 12.30 and 2.30 up at uh, University of, of Toronto Scarborough, they are having a thing called, I don't know, homecoming or something like that. It's kind of a homecoming day. They've, they've stolen the whole sports approach and added it to, to sort of an academic get together where everyone does, you know, there's everything from like, hay rides to to there's actually an rv escape room so my friends in the in the biology department have put together uh actually based on this whole escape room learning stuff that 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 i um that i've been babbling on about uh they they got a grant they got a bunch of these students to work on this stuff and they've actually put together a couple of sort of escape rooms that they've set up in an rv that are biology related stuff and that's all thanks to tech mandatory stuff so and to you know you know the, the wonderful people like um randy the magic man and stuff for introducing us to the the whole world of escape rooms and and, and i've just i've just run with it because i just the kids just freaking they just love this stuff the idea of like of of solving puzzles and and organizing themselves as a group to solve these things is so perfectly in tune with with kids because they're they're used to video games they're used to um uh you know online organizing themselves and 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 communities and stuff and the idea that they can sort of pull themselves together solve these things and then and then my pitch is that they should go further and they should start creating their own as well that that, that the learning happens when they start putting that the stuff that they've learned from the escape puzzles and also from from whatever courses they're they're taking and then and then try to put them into some kind of a puzzle to for other other people to solve so i'm just gonna have a lot of fun with my desk that's on wheels don't mind me this is where i'm gonna i'm gonna dis disconnect again all my cables um okay so chats i've got a chat here and i should also check my youtube chat and i'm not going to talk for a very long time today because as i say it is my uh my wonderful wife's birthday today so uh, i think we're going to kick back she wants to watch a movie 
There's a new movie on Apple TV, apparently, about uh, that has George Clooney and uh, and uh, what's his name and uh, uh, that that good-looking fella together in a, some kind of a crime thing. So she wants to watch that. She wants to watch good-looking men, you know, battling it out. George Clooney and um, uh, God, what is his name? Brad Pitt. Uh, so, so that's what she wants to do on her birthday. I'm going to accept that. And so we're going to kick back and do that. And I'm taking her out for a nice dinner tonight. So, um, yeah. And then, as I say, then it's the big party is tomorrow. <laughs> but it's for an 80-year-old. Let me find my channel. Let me find my live chat, folks. I am a Stargate carrot cake with cream cheese icing. Yes, indeed. Am I ever. Oh, there you go. I can find my chat. I'm going to pop that chat out. Pop out the chat. Pop it out. Let me see what's going on. Who can I say hi to from the from the YouTube world? I will say hi to Rebel Time Lady. Woohoo! Uh, Jim the Evo, of course, again. Uh, Candy Mitch, Phyllis. Are people watching on both? You guys are on oh, I guess you probably switched from one to the other going like, uh, I can't hear him. Maybe it's not working on YouTube. No, it's just not working in my brain. Blurdy Dad. Um, Ananda Bricker. Paranoid Badger. Oh, no, no sound. Um, and who else? Dana. James. Karim, how are you? Sound check, sound check. Uh, yes, so definitely, I wasn't actually muted. I'd managed to disconnect the cable entirely because that's the McKay way. So I got the chat out there. Let's do this. Um, and uh, oh, we've got hype trains going again. I, it's so funny having the two different platforms going at the same time. I quite like it though. I much prefer... I much prefer YouTube because I find it, it's so much easier to sort of find and search and and the discoverability on youtube is great but the but the interface on twitch is just so much nicer for this whole chat live stream stuff so uh thank you legend of slash that's very kind of you apparently i was loved in stargate my character your character was my favorite my and strangely enough my character was my favorite as well um so uh so yes yeah, so come visit me tomorrow twelve thirty uh at uh university of toronto scarborough it's very sort of impromptu. I'm not, this is not like a convention or anything like that. I'm happy to, you know, sign stuff if people show up or whatever. But, but, um, but mainly I'm there just because I just wanted to geek out with the, with the, my biology friends about the possibility of life on other planets and, um, what aliens would look like and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm there to present the first stage of engineering, the, the, the dreaming phase that is science fiction and, uh, and, and hopefully some, you know, maybe just sort of, comic relief probably more than anything else but um as i say these are just these are some very good friends of mine and, and they as i say are, i've been doing a fantastic job with this escape room stuff as well so i'm looking forward to seeing that feel free to dm me on twitch or discord preferred oh what are you discording what's what's up hmm? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Huh? i'm not in a movie with george clooney that'd be fun though wouldn't it uh that'd be my dream rv escape I like the idea. Lord of the Flies was the ultimate escape room for kids. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? What was it? They were making that film and they said the one thing that they learned in making the film was that it would never have taken as long as it did in the book for the kids to turn on each other. <laughs> and apparently there was, they, they, the kids got weird within like the first week of filming that. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I've earned a hype chest reward. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't like clicking things. Are you actually Canadian? I am actually I am actually Canadian, yes. Uh, but I'm also British, and I'm also American. I've got three passports. Three passports in one language. I can be unemployed in three different countries at the same time. In fact, I am. Yeah, I just had a big debate about a job. I actually ended up turning it down. Um, but uh, but uh, that sort of, of course, put me in this whole sort of, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I going to be when I grow up? What do I do? Because this, this job came up, and, and, you know, it was would have been a fun job and 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 i you know i like the people involved and stuff but it required going away again and 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 the money was just for some reason the money has just got really really bad and i i don't know whether this is the right right approach or not to take but i feel like i feel like if i keep working for cheaper and cheaper money then it's not like it's going to go back up again like i feel like i need to set a li you know, to set a rate and, and, you know, as long as people still pay that at least once in a while, I'll have to turn stuff down if they don't, but, but, but when they do it, you know, it just sort of, it sets a standard. I, I just feel like I've been doing this for so long at this point that if it, if it's, you know, if I can't get my, the, you know, the ri my, my, my rates, I feel like then, you know, I should probably be doing something else. So I started looking for other things to do. Certainly. Um, great chat with uh, Lance yesterday. 
Uh, very, very good to catch up with uh, Gimpy G. Hello, Gimpy G's right there. Futurist, David Hewlett. Oh, my God. We were talking about futurists the other day. I, I hate the term futurist. I just, for some reason, it really bothers me. It's almost like, it's like pet psychic or something. I just don't, I, it just doesn't, I, I, I know I shouldn't. It's probably very unfair, I'm sure. But futurist just seems like, it just sounds like a made up, it just sounds like a made up thing. I'm going to have a whole future society after me now, but, but yeah. Uh, would you mind saying happy birthday to my wife, Dr. Adrian Brown? I think I could do that, Fabricator 101. In fact, I just did. Happy birthday, Dr. Adrian Brown. And happy birthday to Jane Loman, by the way, as well, whose birthday it is today. My wife, my fabulous wife's birthday today. Uh, I am recovering from a nerd con that required a lot of socializing. So this is nice. Really? Recovering from a nerd con. What nerd con was that? As a goth kid, I've always said the Wraith were goth. Yeah, the Wraith are pretty goth. It's true. Huge fans. Thank you very much, Fabricator. And uh, and do have a happy birthday, indeed. Is it her birthday today? I'm assuming I'm assuming it is today or somewhere around now, you know. Uh, hello, fellow goth. I was never really goth. I did like my eye makeup, but I was I was never really... I don't think it was more... I was more sort of the new romantic. I had my sort of frilly sleeves and, you know, my floppy hair and clothes and stuff. That was more my thing. Uh, do you have any conventions in Ontario? Um, Legend of Slash, it's interesting. I don't, um, I don't usually. I mean, they're honestly mainly because I'm just not invited. I'll go to little things here and there like this, like this, um, uh, University of Toronto Scarborough thing. It's free. Like, it's not like I'm not, these are not paying gigs. This is a, I'm sort of just doing what I feel is kind of like science, lifelong learning outreach stuff. Like, I just think it's really important that, that, people are excited about this stuff because I just worry if we stop thinking what is it you have an open mind but not so open that your brain falls out like I I feel like we gotta we gotta start we gotta start getting better at debate and and talking about things because I I feel like that's just sort of falling apart right now um I also surprisingly weirdly in a fit of of some kind of organization I got the email of awesome awesomeness out today so if you haven't already got that go to techbandits.org and sign yourself up for that because um, I, I sent the email out today. Uh, it's been a while. It's been quite a while since I sent that. In fact, why don't I even, I can talk about what I talk about in it. Why don't I do that? That would be a brilliant plan, David. Now that they can hear you, what a genius idea. Um, in fact, I'll go and look at it in my own email to make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to look. Shall we? Um, if I can find it, of course. La, 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 la. I always get it and I'm like, what the hell is this? I just wrote that. And of course it's, it's from myself. So of course I did. I'm always assuming I'm getting hacked now. That's my, that's my assumption about everything. Here we go. So, um, I wonder where I, am I supposed to get it? I wonder, oh, I wonder if it got put in myself from myself. It's probably going like, ah, come on. This is a total ripoff into learning. Um, yeah, I've got some fun courses that I'm, I gotta get, I gotta get working on for sure. Um, all right, let me see if I can, I'm just gonna pull this thing up like this instead. Please talk amongst yourselves while I natter along with my little post burn and learn endorphins flying. Good, uh, good workout today. I did actually 45 minutes today on the elliptical, uh, not the elliptical, on the, what's it called? The ERG? I call it the R2C2. It's the rowing machine that I am now kind of addicted to. I'm trying to do it. I was doing it every day. I've sort of held back recently because I just found I was getting aches and pains in places I didn't want to have aches and pains. So I've started doing it every other day uh, in the hopes of, of sort of, I don't want to, I don't want to go injure myself and then not be able to freaking do it because God knows I don't need an excuse not to. Although it's really weird taking a day off. I don't like taking a day off. It always throws me off. All right. So um, email of awesome awesomeness, which needs a better name. Got to come up with a better name for that. Feel free to hurl suggestions at me. So this week, um, got some fun stuff in it. Really just a, a, a touching base, keeping everyone up to date on what's going on. Talking about these biology escapes, again, up at uh, University of Toronto. Uh, Professor Mason, Professor Ashuk, uh, or Ashok, Ashuk, Ashuk, I think it's Ashuk. Um, and uh, they've just been amazing. They've sort of just gone full tilt into this concept of, of escape puzzle learning with her fourth year biology students. And as I say, they've, they've created puzzles. I think they're aimed at like grade eight to 12. And I think those are the ones that they're doing at the, in the RV. They've got like, you've, University of Toronto has bought like a 
an RV of some sort. I don't know why, for outreach, I guess. And for some reason, that's where the biology department has ended up, doing these escape rooms. I thought they should do like a Breaking Bad version, but that's just me. And probably not very, not quite what they want from their biology department, I'm sure. Uh, so just about that, talking about these uh, mobileescape.ca. Um, these are the people who do these... Uh, they're like letter versions of escape rooms. So you get like a little, in an envelope, you get a whole escape room, little puzzles you've got to solve and maps and stuff like that. And they're just really smart. And they're just a great and cheap introduction to escape rooms and, and sort of low maintenance for me because like I'm about to start working with the with the community center kids again uh, for this, this, this um, semester. And they are, there's going to be like 40 of them. So the idea is like 40 of them you know, I can divide them into groups and just buy a chunk of these things. And they've just, they've each got something to work on. And um, they it worked out really well last time. What I really want to do though is push, is get hopefully get them in a little early, get them, see how they respond to it, obviously, because each group is different. But if they do like it, to try to get them into, into building their own. And they've got a whole space downstairs that's a youth center, which is not really getting utilized as much as I, I it could be. So the hope is that maybe we can convince them to, 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 go and design an escape room in there of some sort. They got some fun little nooks and crannies and stuff that they can use. So, um, but mobile escape is the company that I usually go to for these, these escapes. So I'm trying to get in touch with them or companies like them. Um, and to put together our own escape pack, like I'd love to like collaborate with a company that's building these things and I can sort of add like a science fiction, you know, element to to what they're doing perhaps or even just a theatrical whatever some kind of acting thing um but also sneak in some learning in there because well i don't even have to you don't think you have to sneak in learning basically the beautiful part about the escape room stuff is that it pulls together so many different skills that are part of the curriculum for, for learning and stuff so um so looking for for some of those uh, for those connections if someone's got any any connections anyone doing that kind of stuff let me know um Yes, that's the homecoming celebrations. That's what it's called. And that is from 1 p.m. to 2.30, uh, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. on September the 28th, so tomorrow. And that's up at the uh, University of Toronto Scarborough uh, campus. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, community Center. Yeah, I just sort of talked about the Community Center a bit, um, that we're going to be doing some escape puzzle stuff. I'm sort of pitching it to them with sort of murders, alien, horror, that kind of stuff is the pitch for the escape rooms. Like that would be the, the themes that we'll go with because I feel those probably resonate with the kids more than, than anything else right now. The last time we did was like this, um, you know, old timey murder mystery thing. And honestly, I, I was sort of, I suddenly realized how old I was because, you know, it talked about telephones and, and all these things that were basically complete historical relics to these to these kids so i really think it's probably better this time to focus on some some more of the the silly horror not obviously not to scare the crap out of them or anything but but uh is that um the other advantage of course is that that i i have a bunch of these 3d printers now prusa has been very very ridiculously generous i'm i'm embarrassed uh but has provided me with this brand new prusa mark IV. i don't know if you could see I should check my stream so I can see what I'm showing you. So I don't know if you can see past my phone and my bubbly. Uh, I'm going to move that for you. You can see that fabulous array of Prusas beginning to, to form. The The one on the on the right is an older one, but this one here is this fabulous, um, uh, fabulous Mark IV. And it's just, oh my God, it's such a great such a great zippy little printer. And uh, And I've got, he's given me a bunch of upgrades for the old one to upgrade that and then i and i think and, and and build some other ones well they're all kits so i build them all i have to build them all myself which i love doing i gotta say i was hoping to rope some kids in but for some reason yeah not a lot of interest in you want me to build a 3d printer for you it's like uh how much do you how much do i get paid for that i'm like well no it's fun yeah good luck anyways so the idea with that is to build a little printer farm so i can build larger uh 3d prints and I'm hoping that those will be elements that we can use in the uh, in the escape rooms, right? So if there's some fun sort of art design stuff we can, or, or practical puzzles even. There's some puzzle stuff I was playing with the other day, uh, which has gone somewhere. But uh, some fun little 3D printed puzzles and, and um, locks and stuff that I think would be fun for them to play with. Um, 
I even wondered about doing some lock picking. I'm not sure how, how that would go down at the community center, though, because some of these kids may may use it to nefar for nefarious reasons. Um, I doubt it. But but I'm sure that the people running it may not be as thrilled about that. I love the idea of lock picking because to me it's it's like the it's the it's the ultimate geek out because you're you're trying to figure out how a lock works so that you can unlock it. Uh, and I just think that's just a great use of, of your brain and, and analytical skills and critical thinking and all that kind of jazz. Um, you know, trying to just figure out how to to use a piece of of, of technology in a way that it's not meant to. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so the idea is to be able to print some fun 3D printed props and puzzles and stuff. And then, of course, um, uh, we've got uh, we've got the fabulous um, uh, CNC machine here, uh, which uh, which is which was a, again another very very kind donation. Um, Jonathan Leeton Hoggett, I believe, if I got it right. I never get his name right. He's got a wonderfully wonderful british sounding name um uh but again was was donated to us for for tech bandit uh things to, to to play with so so the idea is that we can you know we can create some fun portions of these puzzles and the kids can actually work on this stuff so uh and it just i think it'd be really fun for them to have their own their own puzzle like something and i and i want to i'd be very curious to hear what they do with it like what is their what are the stories they want to tell with these things? Because there's a storytelling element. There's a there is a um, presentation element. There's audio visual. There's music. There's I mean, there's so many different elements of these things that could be played with. And I feel like what a great way of sort of it's like sorting the Lego in one of those like those Lego sorting machines where you know you put all the kids in the top and you sort of shake it. And my hope is that all the kids who are into making films go to the film video portion and. All of the acting folks you hang out in the acting portion and, and act pretentious. Um, and then there's people who just want to write, and there's people who just want to do the do the electronics and 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 work on the you know on the on the physics and, and mechanics of things. So I I love the idea of this as a as a way of not just teaching kids, but also of helping them find that key group of of friends that can sort of help propel them into success in the, in the, in the rest of their lives. I mean, I was very, very lucky that way. Like when I was 13, 14 years old, I, I hooked up with my filmmaking friends in high school and uh, I was terrible at school. I, was, I hated school. I hated everything about school, except I fell in with this wonderful gang of filmmakers and we just made films. That's what we did. And I didn't know. I thought I was goofing off. I literally thought we were goofing off. Like I was like, "Oh boy, we're screwed." Yeah, you know, we're. I'm, I'm not doing homework. I'm. I'm making films. Of course, the teachers are laughing, laughing their butts off because they're like, they're like, little Hewlett doesn't even realize he's actually learning tons of stuff, but he thinks he's getting away with it. But you know, so we made movies, and I still work with them today. So my hope is that if we can, like I say, use something like this escape room learning stuff, or or at least the tech banditry stuff in some way, shape, or form, to sort of the Lego sorter to sort of let people fall into in, in with the right, you know, the right similar mind, similar minded kids and stuff. Oh my God. I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. Um, paper clips. Thank you. Paper clips. Uh, Doritos. I know paper clips. You had to put Doritos in there. Oh my God. It really is nice. Isn't it nice to see Cal? It is nice to see Cal. Cal is always, you know, that the, the, the wonderful flowery and, and happy Cal. Who is probably cursing and swearing at me for not knowing how to do, uh, uh, for for not getting my my microphone my microphones right? Uh, Elizabeth the Zed says we teach them digital lock picking all the time. Yeah, I guess you know you know I mean, yeah I mean in a way it's funny even locks are a bit antiquated now, aren't they? I mean the the fact that a physical lock is I mean so many of these locks are now digital anyways. But um, but uh, yeah I mean I feel like kids are natural hackers in that they're constantly trying that you know they've, they've got the time and the inclination to to experiment with with making things work differently than they were than they were meant to so um a good thing i just made dinner good thing freckled dawn very good i came up with a better name for that email thing what do you got horrid seven what do you got throw your names out there don't just announce it i need proof uh i have a mark 3s oh very good yeah i think the mark 3, i think that's what i've got i think it's the mark 3 and then i've got an upgrade to the s i believe uh, and then I've got this whole multi-filament thing. I've never really played with multi-filament, but like I said when I was muted, uh, you know, printing these, I ran out of of uh, of of one of the filaments. I was using this. Actually, I should do. I should say it again. Actually, because the um, I, I got all these these fun little 
short ends, as we would call them in the film industry, when we were making films, used to get anyone who, if, if there was film that didn't get used, you would use that to make your film if you didn't have a lot of money. So these are little short ends of, of filament. So, and they're sent in these little, just, just you know, just little coils of, of the stuff to try out. And it was in this, I can't remember what it was called, it was an alien, alien 3D or something. It was this, this, this wonderful little nerd who put together these boxes of, of fun things to build and, and uh, little bits of, like I say, little samples of filament to try out. And um, uh, just absolutely lovely guy. I went back and forth with him for a while. I used to get the box, but I don't, I don't know what happened to him. He's, he's still around or not. But but um, but yeah, he's um, uh, it's really fun just having these. So you just got, I had a bunch of these short ends, so I, I use them whenever I can. And I was looking for a pet uh, pet G type of filament. So I found this this these short ends and started using them. But what's kind of fun is you get this, is a dual, you know, it sort of, it sexies up the Zeds a bit. And then these things, as I say, just get used to, uh, to organize cables, which is just, uh, you know, which is great as long as I remember to plug them back in again. So I've got sound. What else we got here? Have you tried making filament out of old plastic bottles? No, I haven't. Cause you know why? Cause it's going to be stinky. I, one of the things I worry about with the 3d printing stuff is, is the, is the, um, uh, are the fumes like I? I only really use the, the the filaments that aren't horrible. Like ABS, I hate the smell of, and um, I worry with the recycling stuff. I love the idea. I would buy filament that was recycled bottles in a second. I looked into the idea of creating my own filament with any of the waste prints that I've got because I've got so many. For the longest time, I would just keep every single piece of filament that I that was that was uh, like every failed 3d printed part everything i would keep it and the idea was i was going to uh sort of blend it down crush it into a into a into a nice little fine powder and then and then create filament out of it but the reality is to get good reliable filament you need good reliable material going in which is not what they would be getting from my mix of very different types of filament like you'd need to make sure that you're using the same types of filament and I was just throwing everything in a box, basically. So, um, yeah, I just felt like the the process of, and also the cost. There's the, like an actual filament extruder is actually quite quite expensive. And if it's not expensive, it's DIY. And DIY, it's pretty fiddly. I'll tell you who does it, and who does a great job of it is Prusa. Prusa has a whole filament uh, department that they make their filament. And I just, oh my God, the system they have for that is amazing. It's like a it's like a entire factory of of this filament going across these little these little rollers and stuff. It's just, uh, it's amazing. Lots of filament is plant-based and biodegradable. Now, anyway, that's it. It's full-time job. So that's the stuff I'm, I'm gravitating towards for sure. Because my concern is we print a lot of tchotchkes, tchotchkes. Um, you know, we print a lot of tchotchke stuff and, and we get a lot of failed prints and there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of issues that happen with 3D printing. And so you end up throwing away a lot of plastic. And I, I do... I do worry about the sort of repercussions of that. It's a bit like, you know, the computer revolution where we can all be uh, desktop publishing and we can, you know, we can, we all have laser printers now because they're nice, cheap. And what happens? We just print reams and reams of freaking paper, which is just, you know, worryingly, worryingly environmentally horrible. Oh, you know what I could do? I could, something else I've gone and organized. Look, I did a lovely little, like a little bow on my ethernet, which I then, forgot to plug in so we'll see what happens end stream start stream oh did it stop the stream oh my god really uh i posted the name of the better email thing what have we got did anyone find out what it was what was it called what was the name of the better thing i posted the better name okay yeah yeah no i still haven't seen it i'm still looking uh, hello, internet all issues, but nice to see David. Internet is having issues, but nice to see. It's been a while. Yes. Where is this kids program you're talking about? I'm new to the stream. Legend of Slash. The, uh, it's, it's with a, it's with a local community center. I'm not going to say which one, cause I don't want people showing up, but, um, I mean, I don't want the wrong people showing up. Uh, and also you won't get in anyways. <laughs> I mean, they got, they got security and everything. Um, but no, it's just, it's, it's aimed at a bunch of high school kids that, um, have to do, they do volunteer hours and part of their volunteer hours, they can do it at the community center and they can get community hours by participating in, 
events where they learn stuff. So basically, they get they get sort of they get volunteer hours for for learning stuff, and it was something that Baz introduced me to from his school, from his previous school, and um, I, and it's just been I I I kind of. Well, I love it. I mean, I, I think it's, it, it just, it feels like I, you know, it feels like you can actually make a difference. And, and it's just kind of fun having, you know, just seeing, seeing the odd kid go, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, spiders, maybe they are neat. Or, you know, hey, I could get into big data analytics stuff instead of, you know, giving up on my sports dreams or whatever. So, so yeah, it's just, a, it's a, it's a Toronto based thing. I'd love to expand it. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not sure. I think if I had my druthers right now, I'd be doing, I'd be doing a lot more of it because I just I really really do enjoy it. I can just imagine what he might be saying by reading his lips. Sound gone and choppy vid. Oh really? Lagging and no sound. You hate that cable, don't you? I do. I do. Let's just see. Let's make sure that cable is in fact. Yeah, no, it's it's trying. It's trying. You know what I could do? I wonder if I stop. Hmm. I could experiment. All right, if I lose you, I lose you. But if I don't lose you, I should message Cal, which won't happen until later. I refreshed the fixed, refreshed, fixed the pause, but no sound from me either. Oh, really? I'm you're, I'm still broadcasting sound, so I don't know what uh, I can see it. I can see it in my little, in my little, my little meter is still going. Uh, let's try this. David, no sound again. That's so weird. All the YouTube stream has sound. Oh, so is it just interesting? Hmm. Brilliant, Horrid Seven. Absolute brilliant for the twentieth time. Better name: the Stargate Man's Alpecia, Alopecia Newsletter. Yeah, that's freaking brilliant. Um, no audio on Twitch, but yes, YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. Well, then, I'm not sure what to say. Okay, what if I, hmm. Twitch sound always goes out for me on this stream. Interesting. Hmm. Would well, we give up on Twitch and just stick to the, to YouTube? Uh, let's see what happens if I do this. All right. So. Oh, this is interesting. So you're saying it only happens when you simul stream on both. Oh, interesting. YouTube's working fine, but the simul stream is what's killing Twitch. Let me see if I can go to Twitch and see what, if I can hear anything on mine. I wonder if it's like if you refresh, if you get it back. Let's see, let's see if we can hear anything. So here am I, I'm unmuted. Cannot join call in progress. Yes, welcome to chat. Boo YouTube. Actually, yes, I don't think about that, but that's even with the problems are. Um, Twitch sound always goes out. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if that is. I wonder if that is what it's about. Yeah, the twi the sound is gone for for Twitch. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I've been having a lot of problems with Twitch actually of late. I had a. It was it was pretending that it was. It kept trying to restart the stream for a while, which was really weird. I think I may have to stop and start again. Why don't I do that? Uh, you know what I might do? I might cancel, uh, okay. Hello, Twitch. Twitch is being a jerk. So I'm going to end it now. Uh, let's try YouTube. What's going on, dog? Making weird dog noises. Dog's making weird growly noises. Uh, okay, I like to just chat interface better, so I usually keep it on YouTube in the background, then watch Twitch while listening on the YouTube. That's probably smart, too. All right, look, I'm going to